funny thing is, when all of this began, I was actually an optimist about it. And if you knew me at all, which of course you don't, so you'll just have to trust me on this, that fact would startle you. Optimism was never my default setting. Whether that was hardwired into me genetically or something I absorbed from my parents who love me and have good hearts, but they're the Gilbert and Sullivan of fault finding. One improperly stacked dishwasher, one kitchen cabinet left ajar can inspire operetta length arguments brimming with a, a snark and vitriol that'd make Edward all be jealous. They once had an hour-long argument over how many times Adlai Stevenson was nominated for president. I know this because they eventually called me to Google it. I was asking them to Google something as roughly the equivalent of asking me to hum the Brandenburg Concerto backwards. And since I don't know the Brandenburg Concerto forwards, well, the answer is twice, by the way, about Adlai Stevenson. So, nurture or nature, who knows? Anyway, optimism is something that I've had to, in the words of my therapist, consciously cultivate. And I totally have. I've learned to let go of so, so much. I'd give you a litany of all the things I've let go of, but that would severely undermine my claims about letting them go. Oh, I donated to Elizabeth Warren. Now, was there a voice in my head the whole time saying, is America really ready for an actual progressive, let alone one without a penis? Of course, I'm an optimist, but I've met Americans. But the point is, I donated. So optimism. <sighs> anyway, when this really started, I thought I'd be a natural at it. Social distancing. I've been doing that since elementary school. I actually thought this would be a massive opportunity, a real chance for us to find some scrap of commonality. Maybe the time away from each other would make us less likely to stare at screens when we'll get to be around people again. So I vowed to reach out to people in as analog a way as possible. I'd call my friends regularly. You remember phone calls, right? There's a ringing sound and you hear their actual voices. I was determined to reach out and reconnect like, um, I can't think of a good simile, but something really good at reconnecting and authentic. Become centered and authentic. Like those people who do yoga at sunrise to connect with the earth and, and have a favorite website where they buy their incense in bulk. That's how centered and authentic I would become. I would be, I don't know, a better version of myself. For weeks and weeks I called, I checked in, all the while looking forward to the time when my friends and I could meet in the flesh and, and hug and touch with a fresh appreciation for the actual. But winter became spring, spring yielded to summer and Somehow it started to get away from me. I don't know when or how. Maybe it's because I live alone. Unless you count my Amazon Prime contract, which, of course, I know Amazon is evil and, and I feel like a real dick about it. I do, but God damn it. It understands me and meets my needs better than anyone I've ever been in a relationship with. But... Being physically alone all the time, I started to ebb. The unconscious muscles I built up through the years to navigate people started to fade. Pascal said that all of humanity's troubles spring from our inability to sit alone quietly in a room. Turns out it just leads to another set of problems. I don't want this to sound glib, but maybe, maybe we were overdue for something like this. I mean, America, don't misunderstand me, has got some lovely topography and, 
and very high quality theme parks, but it's also designed to leave you feeling forever just shy of adequate. I mean, that's literally a fundamental principle governing our economy. And that's fertile ground for deep abiding loneliness. <laughs> I told you I wasn't a natural optimist, but, but here's the thing. I still think we have a hell of a chance. For all the, the, the awfulness that people have endured, from unspeakable tragedy to unbearable boredom, from disease and death and denial of death and violence and the tolerance of violence that we've all borne witness to, I still think this is a rare, rare chance. And I know how bluff and eye-rolly this is gonna sound, but I'm just gonna say it. A real chance to see each other. And yes, some of us don't like what we see in ourselves and others. And yes, the, the pain and the anger and the sheer crushing weight of, of history is so fucking suffocating. I get it. There are times it feels hopeless. There are moments that it feels like none of us can breathe. But that low ambient sound of alienation that some of us have been hearing in the background for years, well, it's been turned up to 11, my friends. We can all hear it now. Good, I say. Let's get it out in the open once and for all, like that Thanksgiving at my Aunt Becky's that one year. One day we're gonna beat back the plague, but if we haven't mustered the courage to look each other in the eye, it'll be too late. I told you about Googling Adlai Stevenson before. I ended up reading his Wikipedia page because, well, I'm just that fun. I learned he was, by all accounts, a brilliant man. Far too brilliant not to realize that we all liked Ike a bit too much for him to have a real shot at winning. He was a principled, albeit less than perfect man, or as some of my woke friends might call him, a monster, but he did stand for things. He urged a halt to above ground nuclear testing and a ban to the draft, even though he knew it was not a very friendly 1950s agenda. He was crushed by Eisenhower twice, but guess what? Ike banned nuclear testing in 58. Sometimes you don't have to win a great victory to nudge the world a bit in the right direction. Something about that moves me. Maybe because I don't think I have the energy right now to engineer a great victory. But nudging? That I can do. We all know the world will never be quite the same yet. We don't know how, but are you ready for good news? None of us do, and that's our cue. I believe in empathy. I believe in standing up for justice. I believe in the too often overlooked power of nudging. And I believe more than I've ever believed in anything that most people do too. So, optimism. Well, I'm off to do some optimistic nudging. I hope you do too. Maybe when we can all meet again, we'll all meet again. That's a lovely thought.